Hi everyone, welcome back to the second video of this week lecture. In this video, we will cover the pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of the adenocorticosteroids. In plasma, cortisol is highly bound to circulatory protein of alpha-2 globulin. Alpha-2 globulin is synthesized by the liver. It combines about 90% of the circulating hormone under the normal circumstance and known as corticosteroid binding globulin. The remainder is in the free form, which about 5%, and another 5% is loosely bound to the albumin, which available to enzyme its effect on the target cell. When the plasma cortisol level exceeds more than 20 to 30 microgram per deciliter, this corticosteroid binding globally will be saturated. Means that the concentration of free cortisol are rise rapidly. This incidence usually occur in pregnancy women who undergo the estrogen administration as well as hyperthyroidism. The loosely bound of cortisol toward this albumin is due to the structure of albumin itself, which has a large capacity but low affinity for the cortisol. That is why albumin bound to cortisol can be considered as free cortisol. This free cortisol can exert the biological activity in our body system. Synthetic corticosteroids such as desametasone are largely bound to this albumin rather than alpha globulin. The half-life of cortisol in this collection is normally about 1 to 1 to 1.5 hours. However, this effect can be prolonged when administered in the large amount of synthetic corticosteroids such as hydrocortisone. Besides that, stress, hypothyroidism, or presence of liver disease also can prolong the half-life of the cortisol. Okay, most cortisol is metabolized in the liver. The inactive form of cortisol and prednisone will be converted to active form by the 11-beta hydroxysteroid. Okay. As you can see here, 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase in the liver. Prednisone is preferred in pregnancy because it minimizes the effect on the fetus. Any prednisolone form in the mother is a biological transform back to the prednisone by the placental enzyme. 20% of cortisol is converted back to the cortisol by 11 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase in the kidney and other tissues with mineralocortical receptor. About one third of the cortisol produced daily is excreted in the urine. Okay, and as the hydroxyketones metabolite and are measured as 17 hydroxysteroid and 17 ketosteroids. Only 1% of the cortisol is excreted unchanged in the urine. As you can see in this picture, it shows the inactive glucocorticoid receptors. These inactive glucocorticoid receptors can be found mainly at the cytoplasmic area. It won't be found in, the, uh, in your dewy lipid membranes or ligand. These inactive cytoplasmic glucocorticoid receptors are complex with the H-shot protein, H-shot protein, or known as HSP, and immunophilins, known as IP. Thus, the free cytosol need to diffuse across the cell membrane to the cell and bind to the receptors. The binding of this free cytosol with the receptors can induce the conformational changes that allow it to dissociate from the heat shot protein and also from the IP. And later, it will form the dimerase. The dimeric lichens then actively transported into the nucleus and bind to the receptors, also known as dimeric ligand bound, where this will interact with the DNA and also the nucleopine nucleoprotein. The complex bind of the glucoreceptor elements, or known as GRE, in the promoters of responsive gene will increase the gene transcription. The GRE is composed of two, pro, two palindromic sequences that bind to the hormone receptor type. 
the DNA transcript, the formation of specific mRNA that encode the anti-inflammatory proteins such as NSN1 lipocortin, secretory lipoprotease inhibitor or SLP1, or glucocorticoid induced leucine zipper protein GIL6. These anti-inflammatory proteins will inhibit the phospholipase A2 or known as PLA2. Thus, it will reduce the synthesis of the inflammatory mediators such as arachidonoid acid and the precursor of the prostaglandin and leukotriene, as well as the platelet activating factor. The glucocorticoids also reduce the expression of cyclooxygenase 2, thus it will reduce the amount of enzyme that available to produce the prostaglandin. The homodimers also form complex with other transcription factors such as activator protein 1 or AP1 and the nuclear factor kappa B or NFKB. This will act on the non-GRE containing promoters to inhibit the regulation of transcription of pro-inflammatory proteins and regulation of growth hormone in which is to greatly extend mediate the anti-growth anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive effect of glucocorticoids. As mentioned before, the glucocorticoid dramatically reduces the manifestation of inflammation via suppressive effect on inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, as well as suppressive effect in the other inflammatory mediators. Inflammation, regardless of its cause, it's characterized by the extravasion and infiltration of leukocytes, the white blood cells, into the affected tissues, as you can see in this diagram. These events are mediated by a complex series of interactions of white cell adhesion molecules with those in these endothelial cells. But these situations can be prevented by the glucocorticoids. Neutrophil can translocate into interstitial fluids by binding to the endothelium tissue here, and this will accept the immune response. However, a single dose of short acting glucocorticoids will cause increase the concentration of neutrophil in these circulations. Thus, it, will can, it can prevent the immune response. This increase in the neutrophil is due both because of increased influx into the blood from the blown marrow and also the decrease of migration from the blood vessel, which will leading to the reduction in the number of white blood cells that present at the site of inflammation. These glucocorticoids will increase the expression of endonucleosis. This in turn will lead to induction of apoptosis in lymphocyte and eosinophils. However, the apoptosis event do not destroy the anti-inflammatory monocytes and anti-inflammatory macrophage. This macrophage will do the phagocytosis, but it will inhibit the adhesions, apoptosis, and oxidative bursts. In return, both leukocyte cells inhibit the production of pro-inflammatory mediators. With this, the dendritic cells, unable to secrete co-stimulatory molecules and cytokine, which will inactivate or inhibit the ability to activate the T cell. Besides that, glucocorticoid also can cause vasoconstriction when it applied directly to the skin. It is possibly by suppressing the muscle degranulations. They also can decrease the capillary permeability by reducing the amount of histamine release by the basophil and also by the mast cells. The glucocorticoids have important dose-related effects on carbohydrates, protein, and fat metabolism. Glucocorticoid can stimulate and require for hepatic gluconeogenesis by increased induction of enzymes that are related to gluconeogenesis such as glucosis phosphatase, 
fructose 1-C by phosphatase and phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylic kinase is leading to an accumulation of pyruvic acid and resulting glucose resistance. This situation is leading to hepatic glycogen deposition due decreasing the peripheral glucose utilization which lead to maintaining high serum glucose level. This situation usually happens during our fasting state. However, it will be exacerbated with the administration of synthetic corticosteroids which can cause hyperglycemia. The chronic use of corticosteroids also can increase the fasting insulin level. This effect is related to a metabolic response of the pancreatic beta cells to hyperglycemia which resulted in reduced peripheral sensitivity to insulin. This will inhibit the uptake of glucose by muscle cells while they cause lipogenesis by stimulate the hormone sensitivity lipase and thus lipolysis and later increase the deposition of abdominal fat with increased release of fatty acid and glycerol into the circulations. Protein catabolism which is the process by which proteins are broken down into amino acid which will predominantly be eliminated and converted to the glucose. This protein metabolism will result in inhibition of growth osteoporosis, muscular atrophy, reduction in skin thickness, and reduction in the amount of lymphoid tissue. Uh, regarding the calcium metabolism, the glucocorticoids have a direct and indirect effect on bone remodeling. They will inhibit the formation of bone matrix that lead to reduction of osteoblast requirement and at the same time, they will accelerate the apoptosis of osteocytes. Most of the glucocorticoids has mineralocorticoid activity, which means this substance can actively mineralocorticoid receptors that lead to water and sodium retention and as well as reduction in the serum potassium. Increase in the sodium and water retention will increase the circulating volume in the plasma and cause an increase in blood pressure level. At the same time, this glucocorticoid will upregulate the expression of receptor leading to vasoconstriction, which will further cause of increase of vascular resistance leading to an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases.